Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 in University of Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk about the Grouper API Part 2. We're going to cover the Grouper shell, configuring the Grouper API, and importing and exporting data from the Grouper registry. Grouper shell, or GSH, is the command line interface to Grouper. It's based on the Java bean shell package. It's open source. And basically, you're going to start a GSH shell script for Unix or Mac or a batch file for Windows and that's going to kick off the interactive command line utility. You can run this from an unzipped um, API tarball or when the UI or web services are running um, you can run from the bin directory and webinf of, uh, of that directory structure. GSH is all powerful so anyone who uses it has admin access to everything. So you restrict access to GSH to people who are admins of Grouper. Um, unlike the UI or web services, if you connect to the UI and you're not acting as an admin, then you're only going to have rights that, that you have. There's a document on the wiki. If you Google Grouper GSH, you'll see. Here's that document. It goes through how to run the grouper shell, um, all the various commands that you can run, all the options, um, some settings that you can pass to it itself. The GSH registry commands, if you log in, you can first, generally you're going to start with the root session, and then you can create a group. And there are two ways to do that. You can call any Java commands from the grouper shell, or there are some built-in GSH commands. Um, so the uh, group save is a Java command that you could run from Java, and the add group is only available in um, GSH. And note that commands must be on one line. So if I'm in the bin directory of an API tarball, I can type GSH. And then after that, I can start a root session. And then after that, I can create a group. And I can create a group the old way as well. In this case, that group already existed. and um, But the add group um, built-in command will create a group if it doesn't exist. To get a list of commands, you can type help. Um, the recent commands are history. And um, you can run some grouper utilities, like finding mi missing metadata on groups. So, for instance, that's help history. You can run a GSH um, list of commands from a file. Um, just put, a, put the commands in a file name, and you can invoke that by calling GSH, and the argument is the file, and it'll just run all the commands from there. For configuring the Grouper API, config files are read from the default package on the class path. And in the API, that's the conf directory. And in the UI web services or a web app, the Grouper API config files are the grouper.properties, which is the main configuration file. Grouper.hibernate.properties has the connection settings for the database. Grouperloader.properties configures the loader with all the um, configurations to get to the SQL data sources and stuff like that. Sources.xml configures the subject API, which tells Grouper how to get to the people that can be added to groups or objects. Um, Log4j.properties is the logging configuration that says what log level um, and what packages you want to um, log. And the ehcache.xml is the cache config. If you change a config file, you need to restart the JVM. So in the um, API or the loader, you're just going to kill the, the process and start it again. In the UI or web service, you're going to bounce the um, web container. Each config file has an example config, which lists the documentation and all the available config options. For grouper.properties, it's grouper.example.properties and so forth. Um, so you can read through the example files to see what's available for that config file. So grouper.property is an example. If you want to make groups not publicly viewable by default, um, which is something you might want to do, 
you can set groups.create.grant.all.read to false, defaults to true, and the same for view. And some properties in the config files have indexes, like db.change.allow.user.1. If you were going to add another one, you would say db.change.allow.user.2, and so forth. So that's sort of a way to have a one-to-many in a properties file. Grouper import export. Grouper can export the registry to XML, and not 100% of the registry is exported at the current time. For example, point-in-time auditing and external subjects are not going to be exported. Um, and you can export part of the registry by folder if you just want to um, do part of the registry to move to another environment. UUIDs are exported and used if inserting into the new system, and if they don't if the object exists um, and it already has a UUID, it'll just use the existing one. And XML files are streamed in and out for efficient memory use, so no matter how big your registry is, um, you shouldn't run out of memory when you're running this utility. Um, and you can import into a new registry or an existing one if you're just uh, modifying some things. So if you want help with the uh, import or export, it's run from GSH with the dash XML exporter dash XML import argument, and if you put nothing after that, then it'll give you a help message. So the options for XML export are you can include comments in the XML, you can just do certain stems or certain object names, and you can exclude audits if you want, and no prompt. Um, if you don't have in your group of properties that you're allowed to export from that database, it'll prompt you to see if you're sure. And for the import, um, it's the record report, which puts a um, um, audits in a file that says what it did, and then no prompt is the same as the export. So for the export, um, if you want to include comments and specify the file name, you can do that. And again, if you're not um, if you didn't specify in the config file, oops, it'll prompt you to see if you're sure, and then it will do the exporting. And here's an example of that file. Um, basically, each record is an XML object, and the comments say which, in this case, group it is or stem. Um, types and fields, etc., will be in there. And then to import, um, you're just going to do a import with a record report and specify the same file name. It'll ask you if you're sure. And then, in this case, the registry is. Um, the same that was exported, so it says zero, insert zero updates, and skipped records. Um, we could clear out the registry. And then we can import again. In this case, there are a lot more inserts and updates, obviously. And we can look at this record report and talk about the more objects, the folders, the group fields, and everything that's been inserted or updated in the audits, etc. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And thank you very much.